हरे कृष्णा गुरु प्रो वेलकम बैक टू द मॉन्ग्स पॉडकास्ट हरे कृष्णा गुड टू बी बैक ऑलवेज इन गुड कथा विद यू चैतन्य चरण जी यू नो यू हैव हेल्प्ड मी टू अप्रिशिएट हाउ एक्सपेंसिव द अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ कथा कैन बी हाउ एक्सपेंसिव हाउ इंक्लूसिव इट कैन बी एंड वी यू आर अ गुड कथा पार्टनर चैतन्य चरण जी सो यू डू द सेम फॉर मी आई एम ग्रेटफुल you have service and to relish association so we could say today's episode is by popular demand or by popular request very so, good i thought today we could discuss on the topic of vaccination now what would be a geeta perspective on that and broadly there are some devotees who are opposed to it in a quite a strong way with various kinds of concerns and there are others who are supportive of it and like in every issue we have the whole spectrum some are having uh, genuine concerns from both sides some are having like uh, their extremist shrill voices so it is somewhat of a polarizing topic so i thought broadly of a, fr- uh, a three part framework you can suggest also how we could go at it it first is that you know does spirituality or spiritual wisdom provide us instructions on every issue or does it provide us insights for us to decide various issues that is one aspect of it that means can different devotees have different opinions on the same issue and still be devotees of faithfully following scripture so that was one topic we could discuss broadly then we could discuss specifically about vaccines and then we can talk about you know how uh, overall we will con- that how we can have a like a respectful difference of opinion uh, on issues so that was a broad framework i thought if you have something else in mind i'm happy to take it that way also sounds good to me yes bro so regarding thank you so for the first point i'll start with the experience where generally the when we start off in the practice of bhakti it's almost as if you are told you stop thinking for yourself because you are speculating and just follow scripture and there is also the understand or also the maybe the articulated or not articulated but that the understanding of scripture speaks in one voice on all issues and there is one true understanding and others are others are not are wrong understandings so i was with one uh, senior vaishnava and he told me something very striking this was about 15 years ago he said i will be happier if there are more honest disagreements in our movement more honest and express disagreements I said i was surprised you know, but sh- then aren't we to cooperate shouldn't we be uh, working together he says yes we are to work together but we can't work together unless we are honest with each other and we have to we, we can have different opinions so then he gave me a simple example that so at that time the issue was actually the background was that this particular vaishnava is a senior vaishnava in our movement he he uh, <clears throat> so at that time india was going to, going to go through elections and uh, there was a lot of uh, concerns about protecting indian national indian culture and other things so there was this question should devotees vote or not so i i had made a video saying that devotees can see voting as a social responsibility it is not a spiritual responsibility in the sense that if you are chanting hari krishna as a spiritual responsibility we have to do it social responsibility means that yes it is a part of our apara dharma and every devotees can use their intelligence and decide how to do it hmm? and then this devotee had made a video saying that elections voting in election is not our social responsibility uh, actually establishing varnashram is our social responsibility and to think that we will be for, for fulfilling our responsibilities by social responsibility by participating in elections this just indicates that one doesn't understand shastra at all so at that time then some of that devo- uh, that uh, that spiritual leaders followers started criticizing me saying that you know you are you are 
you know, why are you talking about dabbling in mundane politics? I said, no, I'm not dabbling in mundane politics. I'm just giving an informed scriptural vision for devotees to take decisions. So then I wrote to him and he said that, and then some of your, your followers are, are almost haranguing me saying that you are offending a senior spiritual master and you are, I said, no, I'm not opposing him because I spoke first and then he spoke something after that. And that time I found he was remarkably broad minded. So then he even made a video about it. And he said that, um, you know, if he say, if somebody says tomorrow that meat eating is all right, then I will say that that is wrong. Meat eating, especially somebody that devotee practicing bhakti, they say that is wrong. But there are various issues on which different devotees can come from different perspectives. So the so even after that video was made, still the idea was that you know if somebody so senior is taking one position, what right do you have to take some other position? So you should just accept that. But I was very appreciative that in one sense, uh, sometimes the followers become more a uh, little more narrow-minded than the leader, and they may they may think of as normative something which the leader himself may not take as normative. So that was my first experience. And then as I started traveling abroad and I started meeting, meeting devotees from various parts of the world, I just realized uh, it's, it's one of the adventures to discover how much diversity is there in Krishna consciousness. So that's just my, my contextualization. You can share your thoughts, Prabhu. Yes, I appreciate your, your observations and your remarks. And uh, as usual, I'm getting from you, I think, a, a very balanced view um, and uh, appreciative of the variegatedness of uh, views you, you can get from dev devotees. Now, I think there are certain things to consider here. Uh, the... You know, um, okay, so the Gita, if we start with the Bhagavad Gita, one of the tacit but most powerful teachings of the Gita is that the outer world will always pose conflicts, forms of suffering, and painful kinds of situations. I mean, there's no getting around it. This is, <laughs> this is what the outer world is designed to do. There will never be a perfect solution to any social and ethical issues. Never. Now, and of course, that's what Arjuna found out. Now, Arjuna himself became so distracted by the painful situation in front of him, he forgot who Krishna was. Oh, beautiful. Now, this is my concern. In the process of engaging in Shastra, Shastra, weaponizing Shastra. Shastra, Shastra. That's a beautiful way of putting it, a weaponizing. Yeah. Shastra, Shastra. Okay. You, the, the weapon of Shastra, the weapon of Scripture. Hmm. That's not what Scripture is for. We're not supposed to use it against each other, but rather we're here to share different understandings. And this is what you were saying earlier too, to share, to come together and explore diverse views, not to use Shastra to alienate one another from each other, to alienate one, each other. Um, this, is not, this, this is not what Shastra is for. And as far as understanding Shastra, you know, this depends on, on, on whether we take to Shastra in a Kanishta approach or a Madhyama approach or Uttama approach. Now, you know, you don't have to be an Uttama Adhikari to take to Shastra in an Uttama approach. Just like when you do deity worship, you're performing that deity worship as an uttama, these are the uttama actions in relation to a deity. Now, whether you, your person is able to rise to that fully or not, well, that, that'll vary. But 
we don't, we're uncompromising when we do deity worship. We should be just as uncompromising when we go to Shastra. And we should help one another, just like in a more elderly uh, Pujari will help a younger Pujari, you know, rise to the occasion more and take to um, the practice of deity worship more uh, profoundly, more thoroughly and more accurately. So also older Vaishnavas, more experienced and realized Vaishnavas should lend their own visions and help younger devotees, uh, less experienced devotees to rise to an uttama understanding. So uh, don't, don't think you have to wait till you're an uttama adhikari to have an uttama approach to Shastra. That's beautiful. So in a sense, we can uh, go beyond our adhikar by our, our association or by our guidance. Yes. yes. And even with our intelligence. So, so uh, let's say I come to you, um, uh, Chaitanya Charan, and I, I say, um, um, uh, you know, no one, uh, no one should, uh, you know, according to Shastra, the way I see it is no one should sit in front of a curtain. Okay, this is very dangerous. It's very dangerous. Okay, you mm -hmm. will attract all kinds of pretas and and bhutas and pischachas and so on. And and you okay. know, and th this now, let's say I, and then I start judging you. Chaitanya Charan is mixing with the bhutas and the pretas and the pischachas. Okay, and then I then I just go. I just go crazy because I'm very insecure about it. Now, if I can exercise the intelligence and say, look, Garuda, you're, you're relating to Chaitanya Charan as a Kanishta. You're very narrow. So inquire from him why he has a curtain behind. He might have a good reason, you know? Wow. Um, so in other words, there's, if something sparks dialogue and inquiry and respect, then this is Madhyama. This is Madhyama. Okay. okay. So then, uh, and then um, uh, beyond that, one can hope for an understanding and, and not stop until, uh, uh, and, and keep seeking until one understands something in, in full, as much as possible, in totality. Hmm. So maybe I need to talk to other people about curtains and the value of curtains and so on. Now, forgive me for the example, okay? Yeah. But, but the idea is that we should be training devotees. Educating devotees doesn't mean that we have to understand everything that Shastra says because that's impossible anyway but rather how to approach Shastra, not, not give it, giving the impression that we now are understanding Shastra at a certain level, now go to another level, but rather it's how to approach Shastra. It's a little, it's subtle. It's different than knowing Shastra. It's how to approach Shastra. In many ways is more valuable than how much you know of Shastra. Mm. In a sense, it is sometimes said that the questions we are asking are more important than the answers we are having. That's right. Hmm. In fact, uh, uh, answers um, sounds very finite. You know, um, uh, it's been Beautiful. answered. Something's been answered. But rather, it, there's something infinite about what we get from Shastra. And it's, it's never ending. And ultimately, this is a sign of prema, where it never ends the mystery of the other, the mystery of divinity. We're endlessly plunging into that because we're drawn and attracted endlessly. Now, that's a very high level, but, but we should be open to that. We should be taught to be open to that, even if we're not there. Education. So now, just uh, I love this point that, in a sense, 
when you say i have the answer it is the end of curiosity whereas question, questions keep us in the learning mood but are there some some level of limits say for example that uh, if i consider that say krishna is god now there can be a question of how krishna is god how krishna is so wonderful as god but aren't some questions don't some questions have settled answers for one to be to have a, a to have commitment to one's spiritual path or to con- commitment to one's own social roles and responsibilities yes yes very good you see inquiry pari prashna pari prashna okay not just prashna pari prashna all kinds of inquiry is an extension of shravana beautiful if you are not asking questions you're not hearing deeply enough a symptom of 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 lesser shravana is that you're not is you're not asking questions that's amazing so by way of extension shravana even though you're speaking shravana the extension of shravana is to inquire as in the verse you know 434 pari prashna yeah. pari prashna it's absolutely necessary so so you are saying that uh, even if there are settled answers to some issues but still our our process is hearing say even if we accept krishna as god our process is to keep hearing about krishna That's and if right. we are hearing then naturally questions will come right yeah, so and if the questions are not coming then we are not really hearing if all you're doing is chanting if all you're doing is preaching and you're not hearing something's very off every bit of preaching has to be counterbalanced with hearing if your hearing has stopped mm. if your inquiring has stopped and all you're doing is preaching be careful that's so true and even in the practical sense actually i have found that after the if i give a class yeah before the class or after the class when i hear from the organizers and the audience then i understand how well i did my service or how i can do my service better so even if i am not learning learning philosophy from them but hearing from them actually helps me and if i say i'll only speak then i really may not be able to do my service better yes. improve my service that's so, right so now this, this is beautiful and we discussed this to some extent in an earlier talk when you talk when we mentioned that how the enlightened keep enlightening each other in that chatur shloki buddha right. and bodhayanta so that's that right going on now this is it's clear to understand that this is about spiritual subject matters about krishna and uh, about devotion and krishna tattva krishna lila now when we talk about more um matters connected with the world so how, how do we approach this because in one sense these issues are quite uh, at one level every issue can be very complex you know we may say that uh, a particular issue is uh, uh, this is a easy answer but like say for some people they may say vaccines yeah if you have a vaccine take it you will be protected from the disease but if you go deeper into it then there are many issues so even every subject in the material world once you start studying it it becomes more and more complex and um, as devotees we have finite time and energy how much do we get involved in issues like this say for example if there are elections is coming up then which party should we one vote for now if we want, we want to inquire about that but then there is a whole universe of politics which can become like a black hole and consume us Yes. <laughs> so yes, the black hole is what I was referring to earlier by Arjuna's quandary in the second half of the first chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna shows how complex that issue was. 
He's he talks about what will happen if we win the war, what will happen if we lose the war, what maybe I should die. I, I'm not sure I want to live. Maybe I'll let them kill me, you know. What would what use is there a kingdom? If 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 no, I mean, he went into all the complexities in, in light of, of say Western philosophical categories. He subtly went through and wore out the four major positions, ethical positions in Western philosophy of ethics, which is the, the utilitarian ethics, virtue ethics, intuitionist ethics, and deontological ethics. All, all four types of ethical positions were worn out. And this is the point, Chaitanya Charanji. This world will never have perfect answers. The, that's the whole teaching of the Gita. Arjuna, this I'm going to translate in a few words the whole teaching of, of Krishna mm. to Arjuna in this regard, though, in this on this yeah. level. Arjuna, you're trying to figure out a perfect solution right here in this battlefield, this battlefield of the outer world. There are no perfect solutions. Be a yogi, go inside, address the outer world issues with what you most sincerely and truly and deeply understand is the right thing for you to do. Notice that Arjuna didn't go to the rest of the Pandavas and say, oh, you know what? Here, you should do it this way because I, I realized that I, should, that I should do it this way. He wasn't, he wasn't imposing his own yogic exploration into himself on others. It was what was the right thing for him to do. So that's what we devotees do. We it's think deeply. Bro. If you just enter me. Yeah. I love this idea of go, you said go deep within to explore what you truly understand, what you deeply, sincerely, truly understand is the right thing to do and yes. then do that. That's quite a, That's uh, you could say, uh, very attractive reading of 1863, where Krishna does Arjuna deliberate, That's right. Sakuru, deliberate and do as you desire. Yes, but notice, yeah, but notice, Chaitanya Sharan, notice that it was, it took Krishna all the way to the 18th chapter to tell him, now you choose. Because he was extremely well informed for 16 other chapters. He was in a place of knowledge. By he, he was in a place of realization. By he, you are referring to Arjuna? Yes. Arjuna. So, so in I other words, yeah. Arjuna received 16 chapters of teachings first. Okay. And then Krishna could say, now you choose. You see, you can't choose if you're ignorant. You will be forced to act according to your conditioning. Mm. You'll be forced to act according to the gunas. But now you can choose. Let's say, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm drinking alcohol and I'm drunk. How much choice do I have? of even how to walk. When we get drunk with outer world events, so drunk and intoxicated by outer world events to the point where we lose our inner world of devotion, we don't have any choice in the matter. We're acting according to, or by the force of the gunas here. And a sign of that force is by judging others, being forceful, being insistent, and, and, and not engaging any kind of real spiritual knowledge. That's beautiful. You know, I never thought of the Gita in this perspective. So, if I may just re-articulate re what you said. Please. So, Arjuna, he analyzed how complex the situation is and he, and he got lost in the complexity. So, yes. When that happened, Krishna 
helped him figure things out by giving him not not just specifically addressing the issue but by giving him resources to go deep within understand yes. himself understand yes. what what really matters in life what really yes. matters for him and yes. then after providing him those resources he told him you now you can make a decision yourself yes two hours two hours of teaching mm. from the lord himself beautiful i mean arjun even forgot who krishna was he fell into a stupor yes so i i love on, on his chariot he sat on his chariot threw his bow down and and then you know in the beginning of the second chapter he began to consider oh you know i mean i've been you know krishna has been a dear friend he's been my confidant hearing the the contents of my shattered heart maybe he can guide me and then it's not until the fourth chapter that krishna says by the way you know you, you do know that <laughs> by the way you know let's he, he he didn't start by saying oh by the way i'm the supreme lord and you do what i say to do no krishna is not a dictator he wants to bring out of us what what our true hearts desires are beautiful so he didn't he didn't, right you know the chaitanya charanji you know the gita up and down chapter 4 is where he really starts talk declaring himself as the divinity the very di divinity about whom he's yeah. speaking and the different levels at which divinity works the ishwara level the paramatman level uh, the brahman level and so on so krishna is reminding arjuna of these higher states of his inner world and innermost world of the heart. Mm. Now you make a decision. Now that you're no longer distracted by the two armies assembled on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, now you make a decision. It's significant, Prabhu, that to make a decision about the issue in a sense krishna took arjuna away from the issue because there that's is right. very little discussion about the ethics of the war directly that's right so krishna that's actually right. is is, is so the decision is not just based on the situation but decision is based more on self understanding that's and right the focuses on that that's right and and there's a reason why krishna didn't dwell on the outer uh, world situation in which they found themselves is because the, the, that situation repeats itself over and over and over and over and over and over and over. It never stops, Chaitanya Charanji. This is, we're always left with irresolvable ethical dilemmas in everything we do in the outer world. They're always, you know, uh, you know, disadvantages and advantages. They're always pros and cons. It's never perfect. Krishna says it's either you know, uh, like fire covered by a little smoke, as beautiful as fire is, there's that little little bit of there's a little bit of smoke there, right? And, and then, of course, the dust on a, on a on on a mirror, or you know, or of course, it can get very dark as a, as an embryo in a womb. So, I mean, just th that's the way things are in this world. Different levels of light and darkness, and that's always going to be the case. But the, the one thing we can do, apart from the shades of light and darkness, is go inside. Find the purity. Mm. Know ourselves. Work from a place of knowledge. Act from knowledge. And I mean not just knowledge in general, but I mean self-knowledge and divine self-knowledge. Beautiful. So now, quite often within the way bhakti is understood, the Gita is understood, uh, the focus is more on seeking outer instruction and uh, less on seeking, uh, say, our innermost core. Although we say we have to go to the 
we want to realize our soul but we also understand that in between them is our mind and right. our mind is untrustworthy it is an enemy so often the idea is that you just follow instructions you will become purified and then eventually you will be able to connect with yourself that's so, right but that eventually sometimes gets postponed almost to a inf- uh, to a level where it never comes but that's that, right that 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 has to ultimately we all have to live our own lives we can't uh, have guidance from somebody else all the time mm. so yeah well there is the guru there is guru there is um uh the external the the, the bahir guru and then of course the ant, antar antar guru the uh, mm. the cheta guru cheta guru um so in one sense a bhakta is different than other people because there is guidance all the time it's a question of whether we take it or not mm. when we leave that guidance it's like sita when we step over the line like sita did in lakshman's circle mm. then we're going to be we're going to be fooled we're going to have the the ravanas come in disguise yeah and you can say that actually when stepping over the line one aspect of it could be also uh, just uh, discontinuing the process that connects us with ourselves so staying within the line just doesn't mean external conformity we could say staying right. inside the line means more of we could say inner connectivity we are connecting Be- with ourselves beautifully put yes with our true selves and the reason why the mind can be an enemy is because it's the repository of all this conditioning that we've had the stuff that that um uh you you had and i had before we became committed devotees you know all the stuff the the conditioning of society the conditioning of brothers and sisters of parents conditioning of schools conditioning of of the social norms in which we found ourselves uh within a culture and all this stuff but who are we as bhaktas who we who are we with purified hearts who are we when we feel the love and desire of krishna for our hearts who are we when we actually respond to krishna's embrace that's that's the person that needs to move out into the world and make a decision from that rather than from the minds can you know the thick walls of of conditioning that's beautiful and uh, to some extent till we get there we we need guidance yes but simultaneously we should be striving to think for ourselves so can you yes can, can you just differentiate roughly between the thinking for ourselves and what is called as speculating right right yeah so um speculating is to work from a place of a conditioned understanding and to suppose things from it um uh, to 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 work out of uh to act out of realization and uh to to act from true guidance means that you've gone through the very process through which arjuna himself went arjuna did this for all of us not just for him he did it for all of us so before you tell me take the vaccine don't take the vaccine read all 16 chapters of instruction or 16 and a half 17 whatever however you 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 count all the verses read all 575 verses of krishna okay read all 575 verses of krishna and then come back to me and tell me what you really really think and if after that two people come with opposing opinions that is fine but without that then it's it's just a un it's just going to be increasing acrimony well you see they won't have opposing opinions 
if they are, as you said at the beginning of our session, if they are truly being honest. Now, part of honest uh, discussion is asserting things that you can truly assert with certainty and not and, and without exaggeration and hyperbole and and um, yeah, you know when uh, this this expression that Prabhupada used puffed up. Hmm. Well, you know, I I don't know exactly you know how that expression came into being, but let me tell you how I interpret it. When an animal like a cat is in a corner and the cat is feeling fear and like anticipating attack, the fur of the cat stands on end out of fear and puff, it gets puffed up and makes you think that it's a much bigger animal than it really is. Amazing. Devotees do this with the philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> he's a demon. He's trying to destroy the, 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 the. I've heard devotees say this about other devotees. He's a demon. He's come to destroy the movement. He's a Ravana in, a, in, a, in the guise of a mendicant. You know, now you see that that's that's puffed up. You see, first of all, somehow they have this incredible knowledge of who exactly this devotee is and what his secret mission is and, and how you know, demonic forces have sent him. Wow, that's an incredible vision that he does not have. It's out of fear. And that's the puffed up. The cat is not actually that big, but he wants to appear that big out of fear. That's puffed up. Beautiful. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. Pop it up. Mm. I think that <laughs> it's quite a vivid image. See, there are some things which we hear and uh, we struggle to remember. And there are some things which we hear and then we can never forget them. So this image of a cat expanding herself. <laughs> That's amazing. So, so Chaitanya Charanji, you, you know that whenever you, you agree to um, talk with me, on, in the in your forum here, that you're going to hear things that you know are going to you know be a little new and challenging, um, but hopefully helpful and illuminating. And you know, again, devotees have to to be concerned that we don't get puffed up out of fear and then try to make grandiose statements that are frankly dishonest. Chaitanya Charanji, they're dishonest. Even in appreciation, there can be dishonest statements. Rather, an honest statement is, I have such affection for Chaitanya Charanji. Mm. I have he I I experience such pure dealings with Chaitanya Charanji. Now that's honest. Mm. Now to, to say that Chaitanya Charanji is, you know, a pure devotee, you know. Uh, uh, shudha bhakta, or to say that he's a demon, because I don't like his views. He is a demon. This is puffed up. Yeah, I, I am. I am saying more than I can actually say. My 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 my. I, I, I'm I'm trying to expand myself, like that cat. Beautiful. Making my enemy think that I'm bigger than I am, to scare them away as a defense. Puffed up, you know. It's a, it's a actually it's a, a paradigm altering understanding of puffed up. So you are saying it need not be just out of ego; it could also be out of fear. So usually puffed up is associated with ego, and it there is an ego in it certainly that I think I know more than what I do. But why am I claiming like that? It That's is right. it is because of fear. That's right. And, yeah, and I've seen this that for uh, for. Some for for some devotees that uh, if there is something which is the foundation of their faith, and that may not be exactly the core of the faith, means in objective sense, but when that is yeah. questioned, they just can't deal with it. And um, so, 
uh, we can uh, i think there's a quote attributed to bhakti sansari thakur which i have not seen it till now is something like uh ek like aggressive intellectualism even in the service of shastra is a form of atheism so that means if somebody is like just out to dismiss everyone uh it's echoing what you said what you said in the beginning that shastra shastra weaponizing scripture that's right that's exactly what he's saying uh, so right. so now going back when you said that if uh, if uh, somebody actually studies the bhagavad gita and then approaches the issue of vaccine so are you saying that two devotees may not have different opinions or those different opinions will not lead to them attacking each other because they that's won't right. be making unwarranted claims that's right if they're honest they will say well i've come to the the decision that not getting the vaccine is my most sincere uh move in relation to this issue but i cannot honestly say what is best for you oh for okay. me i know what is best there there you cannot speak absolutely in a non absolute realm that's that's a fallacy you can't you can't speak absolutely and i absolutely mean this <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> that's beautiful so <laughs> Yeah. So, so you you absolutely cannot speak absolutely about things that are in a non-absolute realm. Okay, I'll just summarize it that way. Okay. <laughs> so simple. So okay, let's let's put it this way two ways. So yeah. I I can make a decision and maybe I can communicate communicate my decision to others also. And I can explain how I have arrived at this decision. Yes. If, I, if somebody asks what is the reasoning I have used. But i don't have the right to insist that this is the only understanding that's what right. you mean by absolute that's right and then i can also oppose if somebody claims that their understanding is the absolute understanding that's but right. if somebody if they just take this is what i am going to do and this is what you are going to do that is that is right. fine this is this is my reasoning that is their reasoning and we may even question each other's reasonings so we may question each other's reasonings but in one sense we want to avoid say ad hominem attacks over here that's what happens when you said earlier about this devotee is ravana in the garb of its we're not actually dealing with the argument we're just demonizing the person that's right that's right so when when a person arrives at this position there is uh, at a particular position by one's understanding so are there some demarcations about uh, if if we are a part of a movement now the movement can mean many things it can refer to the institution specifically it can also refer to a broader tradition that we are a part of whatever we want to be then what all things can we expect it to tell us if i am an individual member of a devotee in the devotee community so the uh, the gbc past uh, gbc ec made a statement where they were uh, where it is more or less non committal they said everybody prabhupad asked us to take care of our health health and everybody can uh, deliberate and do and decide what to do and we ask devotees to be well informed about it and uh, there is no injunction from the gbc in this regard so before this had happened the gbc spt the strategic planning team they had hosted a couple of devotees and i know both of them very well who were pro vaccine and they 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 said now even they say we are not pro vaccine i am only telling the facts right. so which is which is fine but then there are always arguments on the other side so so now i would say that uh, that seemed to create the perception that the gbc was saying that we have to take vaccines but then the gbc qualified that gbc say made that statement and overall it's ultimately up to a devotee to decide so but in general are there some some decisions that are more or less given 
for us, say for example, if I go to a place where meat is being served, I'll say, no, I won't take that. That's my decision, but more or less, you can say, I don't even have to think much about the decision. Right. It's something which has given to me. But uh, where do these boundaries lie? And uh, does each individual decide those boundaries? Or how does one move ahead? Is yeah. it too big a question? No, we can, we can uh, take it a bit at a time. Um, of course, in practical ways, each devotee will want to be as knowledgeable as possible on a practical level. Hmm. Um, when you purchase a car, you know, you want it to work. Okay, yeah. I mean, no one no one purchases a car no matter whether it works or not. Now, okay. for a car to work, we're, of course, trusting, well, science. Science has found a way to make cars. In my case, I have an electric car, okay? Mm. I've gotten away from gasoline cars, okay? Electric. So, you know, I'm, I'm riding in the car from here, point A to point B. I'm trusting science that it will carry my body safely from point A to point B. Hmm. We do this when we get into a plane. That is true. We do that. Now, Prabhupada would often tap the microphone. See this microphone? This is spiritual because we're using it in Krishna service. This is spiritual. You turn the material into the spiritual, this kind of spiritual alchemical process, so to speak, so to speak, right? So it's a transformational process. We turn things in this world into something that is spiritualized by virtue of the fact that we have chosen to use it in the service of Krishna. If someone doesn't believe that they can make use of a vaccine in the service of Krishna, then they're not qualified to even get it in the first place. Or they're just not, I mean, look, uh, Chaitanya Charanji, there are things in this world that I don't know how to use in Krishna service, but there are things, so I use them. Hmm. It's you know, if you, if you have a house, you have a house. Okay. You know, the, it, it's possible for a homeowner to experience, um, uh, you know, uh, termites. Termites, okay, yes. Now, termites can literally eat away at the foundation of a house where the whole house collapses. Hmm. Now, I either have an option to ignore the termite problem and say, that's ah, not so bad. The termites will get, you know, discouraged or turn away. Or I can address the termite situation and say, I'm going to have to get rid of the termites because it will destroy my whole home. And believe me, they do destroy all homes. Well, the vaccine's like a, like a termite problem. You can either hope that you won't get a termites, so you can do without the inspections, and you may never get termites. Or you could prevent termites from coming, which could be devastating to your house, and be a secure in the idea that the house will never be destroyed by the termites. You might have a little termite problem, but nothing much. Mm -hmm. So it's a gamble either way. You know, you, you can go ahead and say, look, I'm not going to do anything for termite prevention, or I'm going to do some things for termite prevention because I can see how prevalent termites are in homes. So, you know, you can either 
<laughs> you see, it's a, it's, it's a choice. And if you never get termites, well, fantastic. So I'm, I'm trying to understand. So the two things you said, one is the principle of Yukta Vairagya that we need to have enough knowledge at least to know how to use something in Krishna's service. And then you're talking with the example of termites to say about how uh, you know, our actions do have consequences and we need to be informed. So yes. you deal with the problem of termites or you can just presume that it won't be there. And if you're lucky, good. If you're not, then it'll be in big trouble. Yes. So, well, yeah, But here's the problem, Chaitanya Charanji. Mm. To pretend that termites don't exist. So, now that's yeah. a problem. Now that's a problem. Now, see, what, now you're in the, see, now you're not in the real world. Okay. So, so, how, so how are you relating this with vaccines or are you or you're just laying a background? So, so in other words, if, if you pretend that, like, for example, I've heard a one devotee's characterization of the pandemic as scamdemic. Scandemic. It's a scam. The whole thing is fake. There is no, there is no virus. That's like saying there are no termites. But there are termites, darn it. There are termites and there are houses that have been destroyed by termites. Now, if you understand realistically that there are termites mm. and they are dangerous and they can literally topple your home or in the case of vaccine, okay. you know, take your body away from you. If you understand that, and you understand that, well, maybe if I build my house in an area where there are less termites or, or that I could do certain things that would prevent uh, exposure to termites, like put you know, salt around the house or, or like wear a mask for the vaccine. If one has to be real about what is there. The fact is hospitals are overflowing with, with uh, COVID patients. I mean, that's a fact. Now, you know, if you don't, if you don't believe it, then go visit some of these hospitals and go see the makeshift, you know, tents that they have for sick patients. I mean, go, go see it for yourself. Now, if you want to just pretend that now the whole thing's fake and I'm not going to check it out. See, but that's ignorance. Yeah. You are literally ignoring reality. So Prabhu, I appreciate the reasoning. If you, if you will allow me, I'll play the Purva Paksha over here a little bit. Please, please be that, the Purva Paksha. Uh, that uh, if you say go and see the hospitals, see the extent well, ultimately we are trained that Pratyaksha Praman is not reliable. And there could be an elaborate conspiracy to deceive us. So the very idea that you're saying go and see, that indicates uh, deviation from scriptural norm. So, now of course, I can myself argue against it. It might seem ridiculous, but nobody lives like that. We, right. we do rely on scripture, rely on our eyes also, at least for the we basic do. function of uh, surviving. So, my understanding is that the Pratyaksha Praman is not reliable for gaining transcendental knowledge. But for basic survival and functioning in the world, it is essential. Yes. Isn't it? You know, I had an yes. argument with a devotee. If you don't, if you say your senses are not reliable, then just make yourself blind. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's right. So that's right. So so that is that is not true, of course. But uh, the point is that. Uh, so what you are saying is, okay. Let me put it this way: that sometimes uh, when we turn toward Krishna. And we, in a sense, reject the world, the rejects the world's promises, the world's pleasures. So that can lead to an overreaction in terms of not just rejecting the anti-spiritual parts of the world, but rejecting almost everything in the world. And we may think of that rejection, that aggressive rejection, condemnation, demonization as a sign of our faith in Krishna. 
you know, I don't believe in these scientists. I don't believe in these people. I don't believe in this. I believe only in Krishna. So, so it is in one sense, uh, it, it might be seen as a sign of, it might be a person might think it is a sign of my firm faith in Krishna. But isn't there something else going on psychologically over here? Yes. Yes. See, this is puffed up. Oh, What's yeah. happening is they are puffing up their level of faith because they're lacking it. Oh, okay. So lacking faith in what in this context? They're overcompensating. You know, there are, there are some churches in the Appalachian Mountains here in, uh, in the U.S. There's some, you know, these are very, you know, old time mountain folk that are kind of out of touch with reality. And they have these Christian churches and they go through these, these frenzied services and they take poisonous snakes and the priest takes a poisonous snake and bite, allows it to bite one of the uh, the, the, the congregants. Really? And if the congregant survives the poisonous snake, that means they had faith. And if they died, then that means they didn't have enough faith. Is this legal? My God. It's in the country. You know, who's going to follow up on it, you know? My God, that's terrible. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, if I say, if you have faith, I say, run in the middle of a busy four-lane traffic street and see if you get hit. If you have faith, then surely you will not get hit. Do you see the, you see, you see, this is, you're using the outer world as something that starts pushing toward an impersonalistic conception of divinity. Let me put it this way. Shankarites ignored the validity of the physical world, the phenomenal world. They say it doesn't exist. Oh, okay. So to, 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 to sort of discount the outer world of any kind of veracity, of any, this is simply uh, hypocritical. Because on the one hand, they are, they are driving in vehicles, they are flying in planes, and they are making sure they don't have termites in their house. Yeah, it's true. No one wants to live in a house with termites, believe me. True. So when when there's a bug attacking this house, this is a house. This is a temple. Oh, now I'm getting the example. Beautiful example, Lord. This so is the, the temple. So the Corona COVID COVID virus it's is like the termite for the, for the temple, body. not just the body, the temple. Lord. That's beautiful. That's right. So obviously, we want to sustain the temple as much as possible even though it's, a, it's in the phenomenal world. So, you know, you need to decide, but with practical and, and realistic understanding of what's going on out there. Science, the fact is we live with science all over the place. Right now, I'm talking to you through science. True. So, you know what, Chaitanya Charanji, I don't actually believe you're at the other end of this. I think this is a hoax. <laughs> I think science has intervened and put something over there that looks like Chaitanya Charan, responds like Chaitanya Charan, but it ain't Chaitanya Charan. Hmm. Look, this is not, come on. Science has, you know, Prabhupada says, you know, kick boot on, on, on science. He does only with regard to the scientific worldview that thinks that everything is material. But we're making the same mistake when we say everything is spiritual. This is ridiculous. This, these material concerns don't exist. We're doing exactly what science is doing. 
in the bad sense. Okay, yes. So I appreciate what you're saying in principle. So certainly, uh, I'll just try to flesh it out a little bit. What uh, that we can say in principle that there are scamsters. And we could say yes. going back to the pandemic as a scamdemic. Yeah, there can always be self-interested yes. people who will be trying to make money out of the pandemic. They may be trying to grab power out of it. So, so, so that there might be scams associated with the pandemic. It's it's almost inevitable because in this world there will always be exploitative people, and the scams can happen even in good things. What to speak of in disasters? That's right. But to to so maybe there could be some questions about the extent of it some questions about the right approach to deal with it so one thing so okay whether vaccine is the best way to uh, deal with the pandemic that's a valid question but to say that the pandemic itself is not there the whole thing is a scam that is uh, that is uh, just uh, you could say almost uh, living, putting the blinders on oneself it's that's right. That's like saying that's like saying uh, General Motors doesn't really make cars. Hmm. You know, it's it's interesting. And and, and, and you know they're making money on ca those cars. Darn it! You know, <laughs> you buy you buy into the car thing. You know, you're gonna be charged all kinds of money. Look at that scam. It's a, they make cars just to get your money. Well, yeah. It's called business. Of course, they're going to make money, but you do get a car. True, true. See, suddenly when it comes to COVID and the vaccine, suddenly that's not real. Mm -hmm. Suddenly so, it's a huge ripoff. So let's uh, try to put it to say, if we consider the issue of COVID and ways to deal with it. So one extreme is to say that it is the whole thing is a scam. It's a whole ripoff. I think that is something which uh, doesn't really deserve much uh, intellectual analysis because I don't think thoughtful people are going to accept that. And those who accept that are not going to listen to anybody else. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, oh. That's right. So, now, beyond that, often there is a tendency, and I think this is a, like an intellectual, it is an intellectual shortcut to, to simplify or even to caricature the opposing position to the most, uh, uh, to the weakest position or to the weakest limb in their position. So, for example, right now, Say if overall our tenor is that, yeah, science does work in its own ways, and if there That's is right. a vaccine, like just like there are means to treat termites, and so there are the means to treat the virus, then we take it. Now this can very easily be characterized or caricatured as an uncritical endorsement of science. So uh, somebody says, I saw a cartoon on Facebook where somebody says, you know that, you know, Prabhupada said that scientists are X, Y, Z, but these devotees are saying that scientists will save you. So follow the scientists. So we are not saying that, isn't it? All we are not we are not uh, recommending an uncritical acceptance of scientific authority. Also, right. So, and ultimately, I like the point also that everything is material. If we say uh, everything is illusion, you know, if Krishna acts, if Krishna's jurisdiction is everywhere, can't Krishna act through the scientists? Can't the Paramatma give the scientists some insights about how to cure people? Krishna also says in the Bhagavad Gita, I am the healing herb. Yeah. So in a sense, so two points I made. One is that uh, we are not uncritically endorsing scientists. Or right. At the same time, it is not that uh, to say that, to take one statement of Prabhupada and use that to absolutize condemnation of science, that is actually not just misrepresenting Prabhupada, but also that indicates a Absence of Krishna consciousness to not see Krishna's jurisdiction. Yes, yes. Where it's it's contradictory and it's even hypocritical to go on the web and say that science is demonic. 
because you're using science yeah. to say that. So, Prabhupada did not criticize science in its uh, uh, creative material facil facilitating. Okay. In fact, he said, we can use these things. Fine. Hmm. It's only when science claims to know God, claims to make a, uh, or, or makes claims on consciousness, the nature of life and consciousness. It's only when they reduce everything to uh, a, uh, the, the, the material realm. That's when he criticizes science. Not other, in no other ways does he criticize science. He criticizes science for trying to usurp the job of theology. Beautiful. So in a sense, he's criticizing scientism, not exactly science. That's right. No. You got it. We use science all the time. Like I said, right now, you know how much science we're using right now to talk to one another? It's unbelievable amount of science. And if the whole of science were a scam, this wouldn't work. And exactly. we do, and despite all the moral failings and other problems that we have, we do have a, do we ha we do have a world that works. We do have That's a right. civilization that works, and it works in remarkably efficient ways. Oh, but science is letting you and I talk to one another, you know, and uh, they're making money because they charged us for the computers, they charge us for the internet service. They're just they're making money. That's all they want. This is not real. No, it's real. You're, it's called business. You're paying for a service. <laughs> okay. I mean, you, you know, it, I, I worry about devotees when they get so out of touch with reality. And even we bhaktas say that this phenomenal world is real, relatively speaking. It's only the uh, Advaitins, or what is commonly called the Maya bodies in the movement, that say that this world is actually not real. Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya. Mitya, does it, it didn't say Jagan Maya. We are actually the Maya bodies. We're the school of Maya. We accept that there's Maya, Mahamaya, and Yoga Maya. But they are mitya bodies. Mitya means false. So how are you maya different between, between mitya and maya? Yeah. Okay. So different? maya maya means illusory. But it, illusory means means you know it comes it does, from the appear, verb. It is not what it appears to be. That's right. But it something is there. But something is there. Mitya means mitya it is not there. Means, oh. Mitya means there is nothing there. Oh, okay. Very profound. So actually, they're mitya bodies. We're <laughs> actually the maya, the maya bodies. Amazing. <laughs> oh, bro. You just flipped the script around here. <laughs> I flipped it around, but let, but you know, I'm a scholar. That's what we're here to do. We're here to give fresh understanding. Mm. So everything doesn't stay rote. You know, I, I you know, think devotees are so used to throwing out formulas. We have to think about what we're saying. Mithya means false. Illusion, it comes from the Latin word illudo, which means to play. It's the play between the object and what we think the object is, what we mistake the object to be. The rope and the snake is the classic example, of course. Beautiful. But you know what? But but you know what? The snake has qualities of the rope. And the rope has qualities of the snake. They both can kind of, you know, curve around. They're both long and thin. So it's not absolutely false. It's illusory. I miss taking one thing to be another. Mm. But as you said, the object is there. That is mistaken. Mitya, the Mithyavadis, if I could call them that, the Mithyavadis say the object didn't exist in the first place. 
It's delusional, not illusional. Oh, okay. Delusion. That's so. So you're using versus delusion. illusion. Yeah. So you're using delusion to characterize mithya and illusion maya. Yeah. If okay. if you see me jump over a, 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 an electric cord, saying, "Oh my God, <laughs> Chaitanya Sharan, I thought that was a snake." You're not going to say, Garuda, you're crazy. But if I say, Chaitanya Charan, above your head, right? Don't move. Don't move. There are snakes right above your head. Don't move and you may not get bitten. Okay. Just keep looking straight ahead of me. Don't move. Don't even move your mouth. Okay. Good. We're good. Okay. They're gone. They're gone. You're safe now. You might want to end the interview early. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I mean, you really may want to just say, and then write me a private email. Um, uh, Dear Garuda Prabhu, I think you may need some help. Now, the thing is this, we as devotees must be careful that when dealing with the outer world, that we're not falling into a place of delusion. Hmm. And really imagining things to be there when they're not. And mm -hmm. to know the difference between that and mistaking something, um, not having enough knowledge about something, suspending judgment until we have enough knowledge. Anyway, this is a sign of maturity, period, and maturity in devotional service itself. Okay, so I think uh, what I hear you saying is that uh, a complete rejection of the world in the name of devotion or in the name of faith is actually more impersonalistic than devotional. And yes. as devotion, as devotees, we understand the world is real. Now, when we say the world is real, of course, we also say it is illusory. They say we misperceive it. So again, when we say misperceive it, there's accommodation that we are not recommending, say, uncritical faith in science, uncritical endorsement of everything that science does. That's right. So, so yes. So for example, somebody says science is good, but you know, the whole, the big pharma has commercialized everything. Well, yes, that, as you said, there's business over there, no doubt. That's right. But just be, just greedy, because there's greedy business. People. They're greedy people in there. That's right. Yeah. So, but I like the example of the car. Yes, they're making money out of it, but that doesn't mean they're not delivering a car. That's so, right. so, yes, there, there, are, there are greedy people out there to make money, to profit from people's suffering also, people's misery. But there is something being delivered over there. That's right. Now, we could debate about uh, how, how well a particular medicine will work and maybe some other form of medicine will work better. Maybe there, there could be various debates about that. But one thing we can say is that complete condemnation or rejection. So condemnation of the man, pandemic itself as a scam or condemnation of the whole medical uh, medical approach to solving it as a as just a just as a business money making endeavor. That is something which uh, which uh, which we can going back to our we can say that is almost like knowledge in the mode of ignorance or it's ignorance itself. So now beyond that, there could be ethical concerns. There could mm -hmm. be health concerns. Somebody may feel that, that uh, no, this is a hastily made vaccine. We don't know what its effects will be. And maybe the media is, uh, media is, media is uh, furthering a particular narrative. So even if there are side effects, the side effects are not being reported. So I don't want to take this vaccine. So in one sense, this is a personal decision. And that is not something which, uh, which, as our spirituality provides us the 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 room to arrive at such a decision, without necessarily imposing it on anyone else. Is that right? Understanding this case? Yes, yes. I like the way you're summarizing things. I think it's very, um, very sound. So. So we can say there could be medical concerns. Now there is, I won't, won't get too much in technicality. There are some ethical concerns that 
say some aborted fetuses their cells were, their cells were preserved and they were used and that's how all vaccines are made so yes that is there but then as we say that there is uh, you quoted earlier was everything in this world is covered by fault so there is smoke uh, smoke around fire so as devotees <clears throat> there is no it is not a sign of faith to reject it is not a sign of faith in scripture or god to reject vaccine and it is not a sign of lack of faith in krishna to take a vaccine or to accept the authority of science because in a sense uh, even the capacity of scientists to do things that also comes from krishna that's isn't right. it mm. that's right yes yeah. the ability to prevent termites in my home comes from science but which comes from krishna yeah mm. i mean how often do you go to a doctor and they say look you know you could uh, um you know use a little more potassium you know so take some potassium pills and then you know i start i get up and i start accusing him of just trying to make money off of me <laughs> he's he's paid to do a job hmm you know i mean okay medical doctors make a good bit of money in this country no question about it uh, dev look devotees have accused me of making money off of krishna bhakti as i teach krishna bhakti in the university you're just trying to make money you know you could just accuse everyone you know you're a devotee because you're you know you want an easy life and you want to just live off the fat of the temples and you know you don't want to do anything in society so you're a lazy bum is that what you is that what all devotees are no some may be okay mm. be hiding out in devotees so, hey devotees have used the movement for criminal activities they've abused other devotees oh yeah, that has to be condemned for sure. But you know, if you know, you start you start questioning the motives and intentions of everyone, you're going to live a very paranoid life. Assume the goodness of people until they show you otherwise. Assume the the good intentions. I I know that the person who who, who the, the, the company that made my car wants to make money. I know that. Does that mean, okay, I'm not going to buy a car. This is a I'm never going to buy a car because they're all making money. It's a scam. This is a, you, know, you can't live that way. No, we use things. Yukta Vairagya. We use things in Krishna service. Prabhupada, when tapping on the microphone, he didn't say, where did you get this microphone? How much did you pay for it? Hmm. So, you know, this is a good point. So, there is, there is intrinsically nothing wrong with uh, using vaccines. Contextually, we can make a decision ourselves about how particularly effective it is. Now, I like this point which you made that uh, assume good intentions of people unless we get evidence to the contrary and what i have seen is that sometimes when we start becoming devotees then it's like we are here and that is the big bad material world right. and often that's kanishta. that's kanishta oh that's kanishta okay yeah that's good so be okay. against the world yeah that's right so they don't see how Krishna is working through the world, but they haven't read seriously chapters seven, nine, and ten in the Gita. The I am declarations. Yeah. The Virata Rupa, the Vishwa Rupa. Krishna is not absent from this world. He's there in the extraordinary things of this world. Hmm. So the fact is, but, but here's the thing, Chaitanya Charanji, there is nothing absolutely perfect in a non-absolute world. But but this phenomenal world is one fourth the creation, you know, ekapad vibhuti, right? Hmm. Ekapad vibhuti is part of Krishna. 
So, yes, there's a lot of darkness in this world, but there's also light. There's also light in this world. And if anyone thinks that the vaccine is going to be an absolute problem to, to a, a problem in this world, they're absolutely wrong. <laughs> I love the way you're playing with the word absolute throughout this. <laughs> okay. Yes, it's characterizing the word while using the word in a valid way. <laughs> yeah. Because everything in this world is imperfect. It has its imperfections. The point is we do the best we can. I, when a devotee complains about the material world and how bad it is, and I, you know, I don't want anything to do with it. So I asked the devotee, so do you have a bank account? They said, yeah. I said, do you know what the bank's doing with your money? Well, no, I mean, I mean, I've just put my money there for them to say it, for them to keep, hold on to it. I said, they're not holding on to your money. They're lending money to other people like pig farmers and slaughterhouse builders. There's a fraction of your money that's going to extremely sinful stuff. Do you like that? Well, no, but I mean, I have to have a checking. Well, you know what? Welcome to this world. Nothing is perfect. Now we do, that doesn't mean we don't do the best we can. We try to do the best we can. I have, my house is solar energized. The whole house. I, I'm talking to you right now on solar energy. Oh, and it's it works, it's reliable, consistent? Yeah. Oh, that's remarkable. Got, so right now, in fact, when there's a blackout in my neighborhood, I don't black out because <laughs> I'm getting light from the sun. When, to, when I drive my car, I'm riding on sunshine. It's electric car. I plug it in in the garage. Now, is this a perfect form of technology? Is this the solution to all the world's problems in terms of, you know, uh, the, the fossil I'm fuel problem and so on? Well, it's better. Hmm. It's in the right direction. And that's one of my expressions, Chaitanya Charanji. It's direction, not perfection. Beautiful. You know, one way I, I really like this example of direction but perfection, and you could flip it around. That if we say this world is terrible and we can't do anything about it, uh, we can never we can never make anything better in this. That's right. Well, if, we, if that is the attitude, well, can we make things worse? Well, yes, definitely we can make them much, much and worse. That's, and that's a bad direction. So yeah. we can be in the direction of perfection, but don't expect perfection. So now be in the direction of perfection. That means whatever problems we are facing in particular context, we try to find the best solutions and don't expect perfect solutions. I think Prabhupada, right. also, Prabhupada used that make the best of a bad bargain. That's right. And, that's, and the Gita implicitly teaches that. It mm. never solves the problem of the war on an external level. It never produces an ethical solution because in ethics, there is no perfect solution. That's the nature of this world. It's absolutely not perfect. So we have to look inside. The world is designed to have us take shelter of what truly is perfect. That's beautifully put. So even we could say the whole controversy around vaccines, ultimately it's uh, the way to resolve it is by taking shelter of the perfect Lord and then we will get guidance from within by which we can That's make right. a decision. The Dami That's right. Yogam, Tam, we can but say. It's, instead, devotees can be, can be, not always, but can be too quick to jump to the outer world and make decisions there and forget about, uh, just like Arjuna. Arjuna was trying to figure out, you know, in the second half of the first chapter, what can I do here? What can I do? Can I, well, maybe, well, if I kill them, if I win this war, then what will I be left with? Well, oh my gosh, that doesn't work. 
well, you know what? Maybe I should let them kill me. Well, wait, but that doesn't work. Then evil will prevail. My gosh, I, I don't know what to do. I mean, I, you know what? Just forget it. Mm. Hopelessness. Sometimes, Chaitanya Charanji, human beings need to reach this state of hopelessness and despair. And that itself can become a yoga if that takes us to Krishna. Arjuna Vashada Yoga is the chapter title. The yoga of Arjuna's despair. Now, notice it wasn't called Vashada Yoga. The yoga of despair, because not all despair will get you to union. So it's Arjuna. It's the, the modifying word here is Arjuna's despair. It's his own particular journey. But we, that conversation was for all of us. Mm. Beautiful. So, so Arjuna's, you know, the teaching that Arjuna received is the teaching that we all need, but the outcome will be personal and will be individual. And I'm going to respect that from a thoughtful, considerate devotee who's not puffed up. If I come across a devotee working from a place of fear and having to make grandiose statements and grandiose claims and, and, uh, and dishonest, uh, 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 you know, sort of uh, uh, statements, then I'm going to try to help that devotee get to a more honest place. Mm. If I can, if I can't, then I back off. But if I can, then I'll try and say realistically, what, what is your problem with the vaccine? Or what is your problem with not taking the vaccine? Or whatever the issue is. Why are you speaking so extremely about this? And why is this preoccupying you for like forever? Somebody do you, have enough, do you yeah. have enough engagement in Krishna Bhakti? Maybe you're not engaged enough. Maybe you don't have enough seva. Maybe this is preoccupying you because you have nothing else to do. What is say that devotee says, you know, when I was a child, I lost a sibling because a vaccine went wrong. And you know, nobody empathized with me. The medical community didn't provide insurance. They all blamed us. So from that time, I have, uh, you know, I have extreme skepticism about all this. Yes. So you can use that skepticism to sharpen your intellect and, and your, your buddhi, your buddhi, uh, to, to be discerning. And yes, that bad experience could influence you. That's part of your conditioning. But go beyond your conditioning and do a, be thorough on the outer world as possible. But go to the inner world, which is the most important thing. Because the outer world you don't take with you. The vaccine or no vaccine at the time of death doesn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm on my deathbed, okay? And you come visit me. I'm dying of COVID. And you say, uh, Garuda Prabhu, would you like the vaccine? It's too late. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. in other words, what you wouldn't do that. You would, you would sing to me, you would, you would uh, read from Shastra, you'd, you'd read, you know, uh, from, from the, the Rasa Panchadhyayi, perhaps. You'd read from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. That's what you would do. Mm. You wouldn't say, um, would you like the vaccine now or, or you know? No. So now what, what am I trying to say here? What I'm trying to say is that we have to live with our decisions, whether they were wrong or right on an external level. We have to make those decisions ideally from within because the, whatever the result we can take with us, the result, because it comes from the heart. If we ignore that, then we will not leave this world in a happy way. 
the devotee leaves this world because his or her heart becomes so abundantly filled with prema that they can't stay in this physical form anymore. It's like being in a home, whether they're termites or not, if you've outgrown the home because you're filling it with so much Krishna bhakti, so many books, so much shastra, so much celebration, and so many bhaktas come and you have no more room anymore, then you get rid of the house. That's death for a bhakta. We don't die because of COVID or not COVID, because of the vaccine or not the vaccine. If we do, that's sad. That's very, very sad. We, we leave this body because it no longer can contain everything that's in our heart. That's why we leave the body. That's an amazing understanding. The devotee's desire to serve Krishna becomes so strong that the body can no longer, body is no longer a adequate instrument for that. That's right. That's like Krishna will give them a spiritual body then. I've, I've, I've worn out the possibilities here. Bhakti Charu Swami, my dear and beloved friend, whom I miss terribly, by the way. You know, he apparently, you know, died of COVID. But you know what? He, he was doing so much to expand Krishna Bhakti here and so much to accommodate his loving heart in so many different ways and save us. I easily can see, easily can see how he just needed a different body. So externally, it was one way, but internally, it's another way. That's an amazing way of looking at death. Especially, it's so the so the external cause or external setting in which a devotee doesn't a, a devotee may depart doesn't matter so much. It's That's ultimately right. we are all a process of Krishna consciousness. We are trying to develop that. That's right. Mm. And for devotees to get into debates about COVID and vaccines is just an extraordinary waste of time. That's amazing. So it's a personal decision. Take it and focus on serving yes. Krishna. Take whatever decision we want. And when you said we have to live with our decisions. That's uh, right. And if so, then what you're saying is that if we have taken the decision after due consideration uh, from a place of self-understanding, then we won't be filled with regrets or resentment about our decisions. That... We right, did it in right. the mood of service to Krishna. And yeah, external world, sometimes the consequences may be positive, they may be negative. But because our attitude was to serve Krishna, we will move on. And yeah. okay. Yeah. So there are three levels, Chaitanya Charanji. Three levels. There's the outer world. And hopefully we will use the tools of discernment, buddhi, mm -hmm. and the gunas. Have we, are we just Stay, are we actually in the dark about what's happening in the external world? Or are we, is there a little light or is there much light? Okay. You know, tamasa, rajasa, and sattvaka. Mm -hmm. okay. So we are given that tool. If you don't use that, well, I mean, Krishna spends a whole chapter and other parts of chapters explaining the efficacy of the gunas and discerning things through the gunas. Hmm. And, and so on the one level, that's the one level. So we should be as discerning as possible on the external level. On the internal level, we should know what is truly in our hearts. Hmm. We should know ourselves, use this outer world to even motivate us to be even more internally absorbed as ultimately Arjuna was. And then we should, the, and that's the second level. The third level is our relationship with Krishna and his embrace. How, how are you differentiating the two? Inner means you're talking about the mental level? Inner world um, relationship? That's Krishna. right. Well, well, there's the inner and the outer. So the, the inner level is the faculty of discernment for the outer level, right? 
And then oh, there's okay. the innermost, which is okay. our hearts. And we must know our true hearts and our true hearts desires in bhakti. And then our relationship with Krishna, who is even beyond our innermost heart. And he's beyond it and within it. So, so we have to connect and we have to align these, these elements. We have to align them. When there's an, a, disalign, a disalignment or when things are unaligned, then all kinds of imbalances will, will show. Too much attention to the external level, too much absorption, too much fighting and debating on an external level. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard, you know, is a devotee. She could be the next president. No, she's a demon. She accepts abortion. She allows abortion. Uh, no, she doesn't allow abortion. She just says that we shouldn't interfere with well, just blah, 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 back and forth, back and forth. And you know what? You and I could take up a whole afternoon doing that. Okay? Why would we, Chaitanya Charanji? If I know you well enough, you and I are going to dive into Bhagavad Gita. That's what you and I would do. Okay? We'd show each other things that we each didn't see in the Bhagavad Gita. We would enjoy giving those gifts to one another. Bodhiyanta parasparam. And it frankly wouldn't, it wouldn't be just for an afternoon. Katyantascha ma nityam. It would not stop. Nityam. Unending, unendingly. Katyantascha ma nityam. And it would be extremely satisfying and very pleasurable. Tushyanticha pramanticha. That's what we would be doing. We just sit here and, and argue about about Tulsi Gabbard, whether she should be president or not? My God, you know, I mean, now it could be an interesting discussion for a certain amount of time and that's it. To vote or not to vote. Okay, again, these, what happens in the external world is really something that should be more, I don't know, it should be a private decision. It, to plaster it all over the place and to make this a big campaign is anathema to bhakti. The big campaign is some kirtana. Not sangjalpana. Sangjalpana, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I come beautiful. up with these, neo, these neologisms. <laughs> You know? Yeah, I realized that. So, so this is I love this three level. So ultimately, all of us at the innermost level, all devotees are united in their aspiration to love Krishna, to serve Krishna, to attain Krishna. Hmm? Yes. And we could say we we all have gone, we have all faced different situations in the world in before our coming to Krishna and even in our life in Krishna consciousness. And yes. accordingly, so that is the outer world. And then accordingly, we may have developed a discernment in particular ways. Some of us may have developed more, some of us may have developed it less. But yes. based on our discernment, so you could put it this way, that innermost world, the, based on the inner interaction between our inner and outer world, using our discernment, we can arrive at our own decisions about these issues. Yes. And there is no the real focus. It is not that these issues are not important. They have their importance and we deliberate duly, as you said, we, think, we use our discerning faculty, but we arrive at the decision and there's no need to make that into a philosophical issue or not that make it into a, make it an issue for confrontation among devotees. Yes. You arrive at your understanding and move forward based on that. So it's more like a functional approach to the world where we all can uh, use our intelligence to understand and act accordingly. Yes. I, I like so for example if somebody prefers ayurveda to allopathy that's 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 okay if that's what works for you that's wonderful but does that mean that say somebody who is taking ayurveda is a better devotee than somebody who's taking allopathy i think that is some which is where we may be extending the limits too much so rejecting the world is not a sign of uh, faith uh, accepting some of the things of the world is not a sign of lack of faith right. so our relationship with krishna transcends these things that's right. And uh, That's right. just maybe one or two last questions before we finish. Yeah. Uh, so we didn't get too much into technicalities of 
uh, say the specifics of some medical or ethical concerns about vaccines and i also didn't want to because our purpose is like arjuna like in say taking the gita metaphor krishna's purpose was not to give arjuna a decision for that situation krishna's right. purpose was to give arjuna a world view a self understanding that could help him take that decision and take other decisions and that can help us also to take decisions mm. so i think we are also doing something similar we are taking vaccination more as a uh, departure point to have a discussion about how we approach such issues so i had started by talking about uh, earlier i had mentioned are there boundaries now does the do we get certain straight do's and don'ts from the tradition and do we there are some areas where it's up to us so we could say the core limbs of bhakti they are something which we get from the tradition and of course even they are voluntary we have to practice it by our free will but if we want to stay connected with the tradition we have to follow those otherwise we are not really connected but so is there a, is there a demarcating line which is well defined between what the tradition gives and what we use our discernment to decide or even that demarcating line will be not one line but it will be a zone which will vary from person to person <laughs> right <laughs> it's subtle stuff um the more we take shelter of guru the more we take shelter of shastra and the more we take shelter of other guiding voices in our lives uh sadhu um the more we will have a, a the strength of a decision to be made the more realization we will have in the kinds of ways that we uh decide to to act in this world ultimately the real test is whether we are acting out of love if getting the vaccine is simply an action of fear and not an action of love then it's mundane if not getting the vaccine is an action merely of fear but not an act out of love then it's mundane the idea is that everything we do as bhaktas needs to be tethered to our hearts true desires in relation to divinity when that disconnections there then there's a kind of uh cognitive dissonance in devotees they've got their devotional world they're chanting their japa and then they go out and they argue about covid this doesn't it doesn't make sense this is not the devotional life the goswamis were didn't go into their bhajan kutirs write transcendental literature and then argue about the various muslim leaders <laughs> you know you, you know you know they didn't do that mm. they state they 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 acted in ways in the outer world that would be um conducive to their devotional service whatever is conducive to our devotional service whatever helps us remember krishna and never to forget him these are the bases on which we make decisions not whether something's a scam or whether something isn't that's irrelevant and 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 too often what we accuse of being a scam starts getting really paranoid and you become a mundane person again really mundane okay this is profound so uh, in one sense you are shifting the focus from what the reality is to what our motive is in interacting with whatever the reality is yes so yes it is that uh, when you say that if oh i don't want to feel, i don't want to get sick i don't want to suffer 
and that's why I'll take the vaccine. Or I don't want to get sick. I don't want to suffer. That's why I will not take the vaccine. Both are acting out of fear. But if my purpose yeah. is to serve Krishna, and I'm acting, I, I, this body, as you say, the temple or a vehicle for me to serve Krishna, and with that motive, I may decide, okay, taking this vaccine will help me to serve Krishna better, or not taking this vaccine will keep my body. I'm taking otherwise care of my body. That will help me to serve Krishna better. So, if we act out of love, then that is where we are in Krishna, in Krishna consciousness. That's right. So, so that's right. I, I, if we if we lose our Krishna consciousness over this issue, then what what is the point? Then either person might as well die of COVID. What what what, what life is worth living? If we're simply bickering about about a topic that ultimately both sides are frankly ignorant about, the only way you can be knowledgeable of of it is by aligning your own your best level of discernment with the help of Guru Sadhu and Shastra, right? And then find out what's in your heart and connect with Krishna, Machitta. Madhya Prana. Okay, so first offer your heart to Krishna. It starts there. Why did Krishna start off that verse with Madhya? Because that's the first thing we are supposed to do. He didn't go Bodhyanta Parasparam then Madhya Madhya Prana. No, he didn't. He didn't give that in reverse. You can't, we can't enlighten one another. We can't cause each other to be enlightened if there is no offering of our hearts first to Krishna without giving our life breath. Do you realize that, you know, our hearts, our biological hearts is the most vital organ in the body, it, more than even breathing, because if you, you can you can hold your breath for two or even three or four minutes, some people can. But the, the body cannot afford to skip one beat. Even the physical heart. So in the same way, the spiritual heart, that has to be attended to first. It is the most vital organ of the spiritual life. Machitta. Madchitta, then Madgata Prana, then our life breath. That's the second most important function in the physical body. Well, our breath, our breathing in devotional service is the second most important thing. So these things have to take place first. Then I can come and, ah, my dear, my dear brother in, in Bhakti, Chaitanya Charanji. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm not so big on the, uh, uh, the, 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 the the uncle and the nephew thing and all that. You're a brother to me. <laughs> okay. That's it. You know, I, don't, I don't like hierarchies. I just, you know, we're, we're all here as children of Srila Prabhupada and his movement. We're here to serve the Bhakti movement, the Sankirtan movement. And this is where we have the true shelter. So machitta madgata prana and then bodhiyata paraspada. Then we might be able to enlighten one another. Beautiful. So to the extent, you know, if our heart is placed on Krishna, then these issues, we won't make them over important. And if we are making them over important to the extent that we are criticizing each other and fighting with each other, that could be a fair indication that our heart is not placed on Krishna. So fix the heart first and then we can address this issue. It's a beautiful... Yeah, it's, yeah it, 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 the verse is not, you know, uh, uh, COVID chitta, COVID mat, uh, mat, uh, mat gata prana. <laughs> it, it just, it, it's not, that's not, but that's what devotees are doing, I, I fear. They're, they're going there. They're preoccupied with that. And they're using science to condemn science. That is true. So, 
no but this last point about this probably using science to condemn science then there is the in the bhagavatam there is the example of using a thorn to remove a thorn as i think it's chanakya but the bhagavatam yeah. also says that a snake sometimes that a bird makes a hole in the tree and then the snake uh, goes inside that hole and then eats the birds so there is that argument used that we can use the tools of scientists to defeat them but then yes. when we say defeat them what it is not defeating science but it is defeating using those tools to defeat the atheism that is propagated in the name of science that's right so our battle we have to define our uh, the targets of our battle and that's right so we can use the resources of science even to counter counter some truth claims of science which are actually not outside the jurisdiction of science that's right so, that's right and you were saying earlier pratyaksha pramana you know being uh, uh you know somehow um uh not not respected shabda pramana as primary but you know pratyaksha pramana is used all the time by the goswamis but not independently of a foundation of shabda pramana philosophy this is what distinguishes philosophy from theology philosophy is the it 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 only has pratyaksha pramana in the west i should say philosophy okay they don't work with a theological foundation of shabda pramana hmm. but the reason why indian philosophy is called philosophy is because it's so rational it's so reasonable and it's based and grounded based on and grounded in shabda pramana so pratyaksha pramana is one of the three primary modes of cognition along with anumana pramana and pratyaksha pramana but those are based on shabda pramana they're grounded in shabda pramana but the reason we could say indian philosophy is because so much of it is rational but it adds a foundation instead of floating in a possibility here and a possibility there Oh. so it's very rational so you are saying it is rational because it is uh, it is it is in a sense linking pratyaksha and shabda it is That's linking right. experience with uh, scripture That's whereas right. if if there is only if you are drawing only from pratyaksha and trying to philosophize then it's just domain of floating in possibility you, you just it's 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 how can you build a house without a foundation Mm. It, you can't but philosophy in the west tries to do that it explores all the different ways that you can build houses in the air who lives in a house in the air <laughs> that's a beautiful thought so although we are but we, have, to... but we have a beautiful philosophy that's the point she turned to yeah. you know this you live and breathe this philosophy every day i know that about you i'm trying to <laughs> yeah and the association of devotees like you i hope to do it at least a little more than what i'm doing we're we're all hoping that we can get more absorbed in this is what we are here to do and not to distract one another from that beautiful bro so that's amazing should i try to summarize through and you can use yes that? let's do that so we talked today about uh, we took the vaccination issue as a departure point for discussing uh, about firstly you no know, can devotees have different opinions yes we can and the idea is that the scripture gives us broad insights to deal with issues so he's talked about how the ethical issue of confronting arjuna at the start of the gita was so complex and arjuna analyzed it from different perspectives and yet he came to no decision and arjuna even at that point he forgot krishna who krishna was and then krishna gave him almost 17 60 70 chapters of instruction and then he called him to make a decision so the idea is that the gita in this context you can say the gita summary is go within and understand and arrive at what is your truest understanding of the right thing to do what is 
and then act accordingly so now that is that is not simply freedom to choose it is informed freedom to choose an ignorant person can't choose so so similarly we in this world one consistent theme was there are no perfect solutions so we have to uh, it says we have to later you said that we can strive for strive in the direction of perfection even though we'll never have perfection then we discussed about the various ways in which we approach issues so there is sattva there is the kanishta madhyama uttama so kanishta issues are so we just observe something give the example of a curtain and behind me and start criticizing Mm. but as we move to madhyam and uttama we try to understand and we appreciate so we don't have to necessarily be ourselves at the uttama level to try to try to act at the uttama level because if we are guided and if you are guided by those who are at the uttama level like a, a devotee might be able to worship a deities if aided by a senior pujari even if that devotee is themselves not at that level so with with guidance and using our intelligence we can do that then we moved on to this discussion of how you made this point of pandemic and scamdemic so there is this idea that uh, to have faith in krishna means to reject the whole world as as a uh, as terrible but uh, that is this is beautiful difference in you between mithya and maya so actually in a sense we are the mayavadis because we accept that the world is real but there is a distorted perception of that that I, also that illusion is illudio that is beautiful that the play between the object and our perception of the object that's right so so for us the world we don't discount the world we accept that the world is real and krishna's jurisdiction also extends in this world so there there could be reasonable questions about the magnitude of a particular prob- magnitude of the pandemic the 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 val- the utility or the potency uh, effectiveness of particular approaches to deal with it but to dismiss the whole thing is not a sign of faith uh, it is you get the example of puffed up that a cat in fear tries to en- appear enlarged in size by raising its by expanding say by extending its fur so that it can appear more fearful but it is actually itself more fearful so like that when devote when when we become puffed up then we try to just shastra shastra we weaponize scripture to try to appear more faithful than what we actually are so the claim of strong faith may actually be a concealment of weak faith or posturing about strong faith so then and then we talk about faith, when we talk about faith what we meant by that is that if a devotee is making aggressive statements based on what they don't know so honesty means to we can only make assertions about things which we know enough about so we can't know what other people's motives are and if we make judgments about their heart then say and we are almost claiming omniscience if i say that a particular devotee is out here to to destroy the movement devotee is like ravana so that would be terrible that is that is puffed up so puffing up can be out of ego but it can also be out of fear and yes. when that happens then we start uh, making uh, unwarranted claims about un- unimportant issues or relatively less important issues so yes. you get the example of a termite the termites are really there and there's a real danger and you have to deal with it so for the body the, the virus is like a termite and we have to deal with it now exactly how one deals with it that's a personal decision there are various right. ways to deal with it but right. to deny the existence of the termite that is something which is extreme and we are not endorsing everything that science uh, that you know everything that science says that, that there are people with greed that there are the people are making money that is definitely true but it's not that they are only making money and giving no product we you we condemn science but then we use science to condemn science so that is hypocritical right so that is uh, self contradictory uh, you played several times with the word absolute that we can't make absolute statements in a non absolute world right. and that is a absolute statement we can make <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so, so basically, with respect to scriptures, you talked about um, these three levels of say the outer world, the inner world, and the innermost world. So the outer world is complex, and there are no perfect ethical solutions. The problem of war at the external level is not dealt with by Krishna. It it cannot be so. We use our faculty of discernment, which is at the inner world level, at the subtle body, at the inner level. and then we act appropriately with respect to the outer world and you right. with this approach different devotees may decide different approaches but is that they won't even if they differ they won't degenerate into violent disagreements or violent conflicts if their focus is krishna because so that is the innermost level is we at or it is our hearts longing for krishna our longing right. to serve krishna and with that longing when we serve then uh, that is what is the center of the uh, life of everybody mat chitta we offer our very consciousness our heart to krishna then madgata prana then we offer our breath to krishna so you said that we can live without breath but not without a heart beat so the heart is the innermost core of our being it's a beautiful thought so we offer our innermost being to krishna and then act appropriately outward so with respect to so the the best is the essential message of the bhagavad gita is not so much to uh, debate about the about the ethical ethics of the outer reality as the motives with which we act so if we are acting out of fear in taking the vaccine or not taking the vaccine then we have already we have already lost our connection with the gita yeah but if we are acting out of love then this body i want to serve, i want to use in krishna service i want to protect it then each devotee can arrive at a decision how best they want to protect their body and move ahead that's right and then you talked about when a devotee departs from the world it is because their heart is so filled with krishna that the limited body can no longer accommodate it so it's the like the body is no longer an adequate instrument by adequate vehicle for serving krishna and thus they get a they get a better body Yes. Internally, whatever the cause might be of a particular devotee's demise, but internally, Krishna has taken them to a place where they can do more of the service that their heart longs to do. Yes. And for us to uh, arrive at this discernment about how to act in the external world, the first thing is we offer our heart to Krishna. We take shelter of the guiding lights, the Guru Sadhu Shastra, and then. that will give us the basis for making a decision and uh, when we make the decision this way we all may make our particular decisions and there can be respectful difference of opinion but but as you said the goswamis were not arguing about which islamic ruler is better or worse they they had to deal with it practically they did that but they focused on glorifying krishna so at, at the time of death you know we whether we take a vaccine or not is not going to be a big issue it is whether we are remembering krishna or not That's so true. There's one point which you made towards the end of. I had talked about how can we, because we have faith in shastra, do we dismiss pratyaksha praman entirely? No, you know we don't. Uh, if we try to live without eyes, extremely difficult. We need for survival and functioning. And then you made the point about how Indian philosophy is rational because it it grounds say our analysis of empirical experience in scriptural foundation. without that western philosophy which is only analyzing empirical experience it's just floating around like a house without foundation so when yeah. we have this grounding in scripture and then we analyze particular issues say a vaccine or whatever then with that foundation our analysis will help us to arrive at understanding that can can be anukul to our bhakti be favorable to our devotion yes yes bro any concluding points you want to add Yeah, just let's let's make sure that we don't turn the sankirtan movement into the sanjal part. I want that. <laughs> that is a new neologism for the talk yeah, today. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. You turn it to sanjal panam. Thank you, thank you, bro. It is wonderful good. talking with you as usual. You thank know. you. Hare Krishna. All the best. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.